Good day, everyone! We are the Group 3 of BSIE 1302. And now, we will going to discuss about three laws of heredity and have a recap on how to solve a monohybrid and dihybrid cross. Also, we may tackle genetic disorders and what technology procedures are done to cure and address those disorders. Before we discuss the three laws of heredity, we may first introduce who is Gregor Johann Mendel or Gregor Mendel, also known as the father of genetics. He is born in Austria in July 22, 1822 and died on January 6, 1884 at the age of 61. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who discovered the basic principles of heredity through experiments in his garden. Mendel observation became the foundation of modern genetics and the study of heredity, and he is widely considered a pioneer in the field of genetics. And by here, he produced the three laws of inheritance. First is law of segregation, law of independent assortment, and the last is the law of dominance. The second first law is the law of segregation. Mendel studied the traits of pea plants and how observable characteristics were passed on from parents to offspring. He raised plants whose parents had the same traits and contested that with offspring whose parents had different traits. The characteristics he studied included the following, flower color, flower position and stem, stem length, pod shape, pod color, seed shape, and seed color. From his studies, he concluded that each parent had two versions of a gene. Advanced organisms have two sets of chromosomes, one from the mother and one from the father. A chromosome pair would have the two versions of the gene called alleles. Various combinations of the allele resulted in the different traits of the pea plants. Law of segregation says that a parent gives just one allele for a gene to its gamete they produce. An organism has two copies of its gene. The different copies are called allele. The organism could be homozygous, carrying two of the same allele for a gene, or a heterozygous, carrying two different alleles for that gene. So now, let's focus on a heterozygous parent. Gametes are eggs or sperm created through the process of meiosis. And during meiosis, the pair is split the genes into half, giving each gamete one copy of its gene. Therefore, if you are a heterozygous, then you can either give this allele or this allele to your offspring. So, you do not give both to the same gametes. And, when a fertilization occurs, two gametes fuse together, giving the organism created two copies of its gene to complete their genome. So, the law Segregation simply means that a parent gives just one of these alleles for a gene to its offspring. Which of the parent to allele is given to an offspring is random. When a parent is heterozygous, it will be equal as like to give either allele to its offspring. So that's all you need to know about the law of segregation. The second law is the law of independent assortment. This law states that during gamete formation, different pairs of alleles segregate independently of each other. So listen as I discuss the law of independent assortment. In gamete formation, gametes formed during meiosis carry only half of a gamete. So what is gamete? It is eggs or sperm which is formed during meiosis. In meiosis, the gametes are given just half of the genome of the parent. Each parent has two copies of every autosomal gene and they can only get one of the two alleles of each egg or sperm they create. So the parent gene almost made of a thousand of genes. But let's look at example what just two genes. So let's say this parent is heterozygous for both gene A and gene B. This would be their genotype. During gamete formation, the parent can only give one of gene A allele and one of gene B allele to the offspring. 
So the crux of the law of independent assortment is that which allele a gamete receives for gene A has no bearing on which allele it receives for gene B. So the gamete receives the dominant allele for gene A, the gamete is equally likely to receive the dominant or the recessive allele for gene B. And these two gametes would be produced evenly in meiosis. Likewise, if the gamete receives the recessive allele for gene A, it is equally likely to receive either the alleles for gene B. So these are all the possible gamete genotypes like could be created from this parent. And this law of independent assortment tells us that each combination has an equal capability of occurring. Because the allele you give a gamete for one gene has no bearing on the alleles that gamete receives from, from other genes. So, for the limitations of the law of independent assortment, it is important to know that this law is only valid when dealing with unlinked genes. When genes are carried closely together on the same chromosomes, the alleles are often placed in the same gametes during meiosis. So, the percentage of time they travel to the same gametes together is depending on how close together they are on the chromosome. And the third law is the law of dominance. Mendel's law of dominance states that in a heterozygote, one trait will conceal the presence of another trait for the same characteristic. Rather than both alleles contributing to a phenotype, the dominant allele will be expressed exclusively. So this law says that when an organism is heterozygous for a trait, meaning it has two different alleles for that gene, so the allele that is expressed is the dominant one. It is one of the principles of Mendelian inheritance alongside the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to just know if an allele will be dominant or recessive. So the scientists usually have to figure out the relationship between alleles by crossing two through breeding. Homozygous parents together and seeing which allele is expressed in the offspring this is the technique that Mendel himself used when studying pea plants. So, this is an example for the law of dominance. Let's pretend that cherries carry gene uppercase letter X with codes for color. Each cherry has two copies of gene uppercase letter X and those copies are called alleles. We can say that allele uppercase letter A codes for red color and allele lowercase letter A or yellow color. The law of dominance says that when an organism is heterozygous for a trait, only dominant will produce a phenotype. So how does this apply to the cherry gene? The first cherry is homozygous for the red allele and the second cherry is homozygous for the yellow allele. The third cherry is heterozygous meaning it has one red allele and one yellow allele. Since this cherry is red, the law of dominance would say that the red allele is dominant because only this allele produces a phenotype in a heterozygous organism. The law of dominance only applies to simple traits that follow Mendelian genetics. However, most traits are more complex and have different inheritance patterns like a dominance. This law would not apply to those traits. Being P plant. Monohybrid and dihybrid cross Monohybrid cross A monohybrid cross is the hybrid of two individuals with homozygous genotypes which result in the opposite phenotype for a certain generic trait. The cross between two monohybrid traits, capital letter T and lowercase letter T, is called a monohybrid cross. It is responsible for the inheritance of one gene. It can be easily shown through a Punnett square. It is used by geneticists to observe how homozygous offspring express heterozygous genotypes inherited from their parents. Generally, the monohybrid cross is used to determine the dominance relationship between two alleles. The cross begins with the paren parental generation. One parent is homozygous for one allele and the other parent is homozygous for the other Basic genetic vocabulary Trait. It is a characteristic that can be passed from one generation to another. Example, eye color. Allele is a different form of the same trait. Different flavors of genes represented by a capital letter or lowercase letter. 
two types of allele. Dominant allele is represented by capital letter, while recessive allele is represented by a lowercase letter. Homozygous dominant. Homo means the same. A person with a homozygous dominant trait will have two capital letter, which means two dominant allele. Dominant allele plus dominant allele is equal to dominant phenotype. Phenotype is associated with the physical characteristics that refers to those traits. Next is heterozygous. Hetero means different. Someone who's heterozygous has a dominant and recessive allele. It is represented by a capital letter and a lowercase letter. Dominant allele plus Plus, the recessive allele is always a dominant phenotype. Next is homozygous recessive. They have the same recessive allele. It is represented by two lowercase letters. Recessive allele plus recessive allele is equal to recessive phenotype. Example, two red heterozygous flowers are crossed. Set a Punnett square to determine the probability of one of their offsprings having a white color. Color choice is white or red. So, this is the Punnett square. The genotypes of the parents, both flowers are hetero for red color. So, we will use a capital letter T and a lowercase letter T. And remember, a heterozygous genotype is always a dominant trait, so both parents are having capital letter T and lowercase letter T. So we will fill the boxes. Two capital letters, one capital and one lowercase, one capital and one lowercase, and two lowercase letters. Every time we see capital letter, we will have dominant trait, and it is recessive if it is both lowercase letters. So this is dominant, 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 and lastly recessive. So the dom so the dominant is three out of four, which means seventy five percent, and the recessive is one out of four, which means twenty five percent. To answer the probability of one of their offspring having a white color, it is 25. Hybrid cross. A dihybrid cross describes a mating experiment between two organisms that are identically hybrid for two traits. A hybrid organism is one that is heterozygous, which means that it carries two different alleles at a particular genetic position, or locus. Therefore, a dihybrid organism is one that is heterozygous at two different Genetic Loki. So for the example problem, a short tea plant is heterozygous for pod color is crossed with a heterozygous tall, tall plant with yellow pods. What are the chances of getting a short and yellow offspring? So ang gagawin natin ay dihybrid cross kung saan ito yung crossing o tracking at the same time. So, dito po, based on the problem, tall is dominant. Kaya po, pwede natin isulat na big T for tall at small T naman for short. So, ang green ay dominant pad color. Kaya ito ay pwede natin isulat na big G for green at small G naman for yellow. So, a short T plant that is heterozygous for pad color as your first parent. So, if you're short, you must have two recessive alleles for being short. At sa iyong heterozygous for pod color, you have big G at little g. Sa heterozygous tall naman, the second parent tall, meron tayong big T at little t. Sa yellow pod color naman na recessive, meron tayong little g at little g. So, ito yung dalawang parent na genotypes. So, again, a dihybrid is a two traits at the same time. So, ang ating dihybrid Punnett square ay 4 by 4. So, as we can see, the parent genotype, to set up a dihybrid, kailangan natin i-separate yung alleles gaya ng sa meiosis. So, i-set up muna natin yung potential parent gametes on the top and on the side ng ating Punnett square. So, the easiest way that is preferred to use 
is to do a FOIL method sa parents genotype. So, on the top of the Punnett square, meron tayong little t at big G. Little t at little g. Little t at big G. And lastly, little t at little g. Tapos, gagawin natin ulit yon sa second parent on the side of the Punnett square. So, meron tayong big T at little g, big T at little g, little T at little g, and lastly, little T at little g. So, kung mapapansin natin, no T's are together and no G's are together. Because again, meiosis dictates that they are decided separately when making gametes. So, nailagay ko na yung combination ng parents genotype. So, looking at potential phenotypes among offspring, some possibilities. You could be tall and green. So, pag kinot natin, meron siyang apat. Sa tall and yellow, meron ding apat. Short and green, meron ding apat. And lastly, short and yellow, meron ding apat. Sa ganitong particular na dihybrid, you could expect a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio among offspring 4 to 4 to 4 to 4 reducing to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 pwede rin nating isulat ang 25% for possible phenotypes tall and green versus tall and yellow versus short and green versus short and yellow so again getting a dihybrid is the hardest part pero once na naset up mo na it is a lot more doable. So, ayun na nga yung pagkuha ng uh, dihybrid cross. This disorder is a disease caused in whole or in part by a change in the DNA sequence away from the normal sequence. It can be caused by a mutation in one or in multiple genes, by a combination of gene mutations and environmental factors, or by damage to chromosomes. And these are the list of genetic disorders. First, Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, or AATD, is an inherited condition that causes low levels of, or no, alpha-1 antitrypsin in the blood. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protein that is made in the liver. The liver releases this protein into the bloodstream. AAT protects the lungs so they can work normally. Without enough AAT, The lungs can be damaged and this damage may make breathing difficult. Treatment Treatments for AATD include bronchodilators and prompt treatment with antibiotics for upper respiratory tract infections. Lung transplantation may be an option for those who develop end-stage lung disease. Replacement augmentation therapy with the missing AAT protein is available although it is used only under special circumstances. It is not known how effective this is once disease has developed or which people would benefit most. Treatment of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is based on a person's symptoms. And this is the picture of bronchodilator. Second, hereditary hemochromatosis. Hereditary hemochromatosis It's a genetic disease that alters the body's ability to regulate iron absorption. A child who inherits two copies of a mutated gene, one from each parent, is highly likely to develop the disease. Sometimes, it is called iron overload. Treatment The disease is treated by removing blood, known as lobotomy, from the patient in order to lower the overall level of iron in the blood. The patient undergoes phlebotomy frequently to lower the level of iron. After this initial phase, phlebotomies are performed only as needed to keep iron levels normal. When phlebotomy is started early in the course of the illness, it can prevent most complications. But even if phlebotomy is begun after complications have occurred, the treatment can still decrease symptoms and improve life expectancy. And this is the picture of Phlebotomy, which is treated by removing blood from the patient. Third, Hunter syndrome or MTS. Hunter syndrome is a condition that affects many different parts of the body and occurs almost 
exclusively in males. It is a progressively debilitating disorder. However, the rate of progression varies among affected individuals. Hunter syndrome affects the brain and how the person looks, like large round cheeks, broad nose, thick lips, bushy eyebrows, large head, and thick tough skin. Treatment Enzyme replacement therapy or ERT can help slow the disease for boys with milder Hunter syndrome. It replaces the protein their body doesn't make. ERT can help improve walking, climbing stairs, and the ability to keep up in general. Movement and stiff joints, breathing, growth, hair and facial features. ERT is the first treatment for kids whose brains are infected. It doesn't slow the disease in the brain. And this is a picture of enzyme replacement therapy. Fourth, sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is a group of disorders that affects hemoglobin. The molecules in red blood cells that deliver oxygen to cells throughout the body. People with this disorder have a typical hemoglobin molecules called hemoglobin S which can disperse red blood cells into a sickle or prison shape. Treatment The only cure for SCD is bone marrow or stem cell transplant. Bone marrow is a soft, spotty tissue inside the center of the bones where blood cells are made. A bone marrow or stem cell transplant is a procedure that takes healthy cells that form blood from one person, the donor, and puts them into someone whose bone marrow is not working properly. And this is the bone marrow transplant, which is the donor and the recipient. Last is albinism. Albinism is an inherited disease characterized by a substantially lower rate of melanin production. Melanin is the pigment responsible for the color of the skin, hair, and eyes. People with albinism often have lighter colored skin and hair than the other members of their family or ethnic group. Vision problems are common. Treatment Treatment focuses on getting proper eye care and monitoring skin for signs of abnormalities. Treatment generally includes eye care, skin care, and prevention of skin cancer. So that's all for today. We hope that you learned something from us. Once again, we are the Group 3 of BSIE 1302. Thank you and have a good day.